All right, today we are continuing in our um, CEU on need of direction. Uh, last week we, we began uh, talking about the process, the process uh, as, we, as we find God's direction in life. And it, it certainly is a journey. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. So one step at a time. It isn't God just takes us from here and moves us there. He leads us one step at a time. He gives us the direction that we will need to walk in to His purposes for our lives. Uh, our, theme, our theme verse sort of reiterates that. We trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit unto Him and He will make your paths or your steps straight, right? So He will, he will light up your path as you need that direction uh, in your life. Uh, we've sort of been using the, the um, um, uh, words of Paul uh, in this idea of, of process, uh, who, who's talking to us about process in God's direction for his life. Um, now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. We talked about last week that the first step in, in, in this process is this um, being obedient to the Spirit's prompting. So, so Paul here uh, was compelled by the Spirit. Uh, I, I don't think that's anything unique. I think many of us will find ourselves prompted or compelled by, by the Spirit. But the next, the next word I think is is what was really what was really important to us in terms of uh, the Spirit's promptings in in our lives. I'm going to Jerusalem, he says. Now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. What do you do with the Spirit's promptings in your life? Uh, we have to have uh, this this instant obedience uh, when the Lord says go that we are willing to go. Uh, when the Lord says move, we are willing to move. When the Lord says stay, we are willing to stay. Even if it fights against our natural inclinations or what we would naturally desire, we have to be willing to obey uh, instantly to those spirit promptings. Uh, now today, picking up on this, this third line, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Anyone signing up for that job? However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. Uh, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. So we're going to pick up on this idea, not knowing what will happen to me there. Now, we spoke briefly on this a few weeks ago, but today a little more in depth, this idea of, of uh, the, the certainty of uncertainty in our life, right? Um, if there is anything that is certain for all of us in this life, it will be that we all encounter uncertainty, which is not always uh, a lot of fun. Um, the, but, but it is through what I would say is a gift of uncertainty because uncertainty really is a gift that God, that God gives us. Uh, and I think if we look back on our lives, we will say that it has been in the most uncertain times of our lives. When, when things were in doubt the most, when things seemed most uncertain, that our lives were somehow made stronger, our testimony was made stronger. In the most uncertain times, our faith, our faith was made stronger. Our experiences were made more richer in the, in the uncertain times of life. So uncertainty really is a gift. And I hope that we will all learn to embrace uncertainty as, as a gift from God. Remember, we're not talking about clarity. Uh, we, we need clarity in our life, uh, but, but certainty is not promised to us. Right. We found this with Moses. God was clear on what on what he wanted Moses to do. Moses, here's your direction. I want you to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. Moses was clear about that. What he was uncertain of was the journey from Egypt to the promised land and the 40 years that would be in between that he had no idea he was signing up for this, this roaming around in a wilderness which, with a bunch of complaining saints, right? Uh, because if God would have been, uh, if God would have made those things known to him, Moses would have probably said, yeah, I'll 
stay with the sheep, right? Um, but uncertainty really is really is a gift, and um, uh, so I want to talk about that gift of uncertainty today. Uh, first point: there, life is uncertain, but God is not. God is not. God is so faithful, um, and and I think most of us sort of have a love hate relationship with uncertainty. Um, we hate the negative uncertainties of life, right? Uh, when bad things happen that we did not expect to happen, uh, we hate those moments. But we all sort of love and embrace the positive uncertainties when, when good things happen that we didn't expect. Oh, the Lord is really blessing now, right? Uh, so we embrace those. But the truth is we can't have it both ways, right? Um, uh, Paul embraced this idea of, I'm going to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me there. Uh, I know bonds and afflictions have waited me in every city I go, but, but God has given me this gift of insight knowing that's where I'm supposed to be. And if I know that's where God wants me to be, there's no better place for me to be, even if there's hardships awaiting me uh, there. Um, uncertainty, I, I believe, is, is just a law of life. It is something that is never going to go away uh, for any of us. Um, you can never really retire from uncertainty. Uh, and I, I think the, the longer we live this life, the, the shorter the vacations between uncertain moments, right? Uh, we find ourselves just transitioning from one uncertainty uh, to another. Uh, we will always have unanswered questions and unexplained experiences. Um, I, I think a great example of this is, is all of the people in Hebrews 11. When we read through Hebrews 11, like we read of some of the heroes of the faith, right? And if, and if you were to look through each of their lives, you would say that these, that these people were all captivated uh, by, by uncertainties in this life. Like, like uncertainty sort of marked their their journey. Uh, one of my favorite favorite verses in Hebrews eleven is verse eight that says, "By faith Abraham, uh, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, he obeyed and went." There there again, prompted by the Spirit, obedient to that that calling. But but look, even though he did not know where he was going. Abraham, I want you to, to, to go to a city whose maker is God. Where is it at? I, I don't know where it's at. I just know God said go, right? Uh, what uncertainty is in that journey? I mean, most of us aren't signing up for that. To get on our motorbikes or in our cars today and just start riding because God said to go. Where are you going? I don't know where I'm going. Just fill the car up with gas and let's start riding. Wherever we end up, that's where God wants us. Uh, and yet Abraham did exactly that. And I love that phrase, even though he didn't know where he was going. Um, Abraham, Abraham still went. Life is uncertain, but we must remember in all things, God is not. We can depend upon God in moments of uncertainty, uh, in moments when we have uh, the uncertainty of perhaps limited resources. We can remember that God is faithful even in our uncertainty. Uh, and when we have the uncertainty of maybe a nagging illness, we, we can know God is faithful. God is true to His Word. God is not uncertain. God is faithful. Um, the uncertainty of financial pressures, we can know that God is faithful and God's Word is certain even when life is not. So, so life, life is filled with uncertainty, but God is filled with faithfulness. Secondly, um, don't flinch in, in, in times of, of uncertainty. I want to tell you what I mean by that. When I, when, when I was in school, we used to, we used to play this game um, that, I'm ashamed to say, many of the games looking back that I, that I played in high school were, were sort of violent. 
right? Um, and yeah, they, they, were, they were sort of violent. But we, we would play the game where you would have to stand toe to toe with someone, right? And, and, then, and then you would just sort of jump at them like, you know. And if they flinched, you got to hit them in the arm like three times, like as hard as you could. Made you flinch, bam, 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 you know? And so, uh, I, I mean, that was the game. Made you flinch, you know? And if you couldn't stand there stone-faced, right, then you were getting punched in the arm, right? Anyone want to play that? <laughs> right? Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and, but, but I, I, do think, I do think that this is like what the devil does to us. Right. He is in this. He, he is always in this mode of trying to make us flinch, trying to make us to take a step back from the promises of God's word for our life. Uh, we, we even see this with with David when he was pinning Psalm 23. Right. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Like there's a lot there that would try to scare me, that would try to make me afraid, that would try to make me flinch and take a step back from God's faithfulness or God's certainty in life. But even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear evil because God is with me. Like I don't have to flinch when the devil is at his worst. I don't have to flinch and I don't have to take a step back from my faith because God is is with me. Paul sort of said something similar uh, in, in 1 Corinthians. He was writing that, that beautiful, beautiful passage of Scripture and, and, and talking to us about death and, and just the mysteries of, of, of life and death. And, and I just love the, love the passages in 1, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Skipping down, though, to verse 55 where he says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth victory through our Lord Jesus Christ and we celebrated that uh, two Sundays ago on Easter right but thanks be to God who gives us victory through Lord Jesus Christ and listen to this therefore like is there anything for any of us that is more uncertainty than the prospects of death like even even though we have this amazing faith and belief in God, I think there's still something inside of every human heart that, that you're like, even though the Bible sort of lays out for us what heaven would look like, there's still these questions of what will eternity look like because it's really hard to get our human minds around the idea of eternity. We're, we're, we're thankful that He gave us those promises, but there's still uncertainty there. What, 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 I can't even understand what you're describing to me eternity is going to be like. Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, unmovable. Like, don't flinch. Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. I love those words. Because God has given us promises, we can stand steadfast, unmovable. We don't have to flinch even in the greatest uncertainties of life. And lastly, we need to remember with this gift of uncertainty that life's greatest moments, life's greatest moments are usually a byproduct of the uncertainties of life. I never will forget seeing the movie The Sixth Sense. How many ever saw it? Uh, like, I, it's one of the few movies that, that I, I, I watched, and if you haven't seen it by now, you're way past the spoiler alert place, all right? <laughs> so it's not my fault you haven't watched it. Um, but it was one of the few movies that I've ever seen that, like, like, it got me at the very end. Like I didn't know what was coming and, and I'm like, whoa, taken back by it. And because of that, whether it was the greatest movie ever or not, it doesn't matter. It's still one of my favorite movies just because it got me, right? Uh, it, it got me at the end. There was just like, I was so uncertain about what was happening there. Uh, and, and the storyline just pulled me in and I had one of those gotcha moments, right? Um, I, I think that the greatest, the greatest movies are those that, that have a level of uncertainty. I, I'm ashamed to admit, be, because I live in a house with all females, I've probably seen every Hallmark movie that's ever been made. 
And it's my favorite thing to do with said females that within the first two minutes of the Hallmark movie, I go ahead and give away the plot. All right, that, that lady's going to get with this guy. They're going to fall in love, and this is how the story's going to go. Very predictable, right? <laughs> we don't watch Hallmark movies for the, for the uh, uncertainty. We know what's happening from minute two. <laughs> Right. It's just it's just a given. But I think the greatest movies are those that sort of have this this uncertainty to it that sort of keep us on the edge. We don't know what's going to happen next. I think life's greatest moments are life like that for us. If you look back again on your life, I think you will find that the greatest faith builders, the most memorable moments are moments that had uncertainty attached to them. Uh, I was telling some of our teachers yesterday who went on a trip this weekend, right, to a spring. Uh, and and it, like there was a lot of unexpected things that happened along the way on the trail, right? It was pretty amazing. And uh, man, looking at the pictures, it looked like it was an amazing time. And I, 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 I thought, I, or I said to one of the teachers, I know, you know, it's amazing that, that probably if everything would have went to plan, if the road would have been paved the whole way there, you wouldn't tell tell this story past Saturday. But because you hit trails that were hard, because the hills were, were, were steep that you had to climb, because the journey had some tension to it to get there, you're going to be telling this story for a long time. And every time you're going to get to, you get together, you're going to say, hey, you remember that time we went to that spring? Right. Because there was a lot of uncertainty on. You remember that time we got in a car with strangers to get us to the spring. Right. Because because there was uncertainty involved in it. It makes the it makes the story and the life experience so much, so much better. Um, real, real quick, uh, closing with this. Um, uh, a lot of different animal groups in the world. Right. Uh, and, and I've been fascinated by late as Kristen Lane informed me that a group of butterflies is called a kaleidoscope. Yeah. Never knew that, but I am fascinated by different animal group uh, uh, names. Um, group of buzzards. It's called a committee. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody thinking differently about the committee you served on this year? <laughs> Bunch of buzzards. Yeah. Now, um, um, a, a group of gr crows, my favorite, I think, a group of crows, a murder, a murder of crows. That's, that's crazy, right? Uh, but but uh, a rhinoceros, a group of rhinoceroses, I love this, it's called a crash. <laughs> Seriously, isn't that amazing? A crash of rhinos. Uh, I, I, I love that. Um, but but here's here's the funny thing about rhinos these huge powerful animals do you realize they are actually faster than squirrels right they can they can <laughs> squirrels squirrels can run 26 miles per hour rhinos can run 30 miles per hour that's incredible that's crazy uh, rhinos though have terrible eyesight so they can only see about 30 feet in front of them so you sort of see where they get the, 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 the word crash from because they're running 30 miles an hour and only see 30 feet in front of them. They need that big horn on the front of them to help them stop or whatever they're about to hit, right? Um, well, listen, Erwin McManus, Erwin McManus was, was giving this illustration of the rhinos in, in his book, uh, in one of his books, and, and then, he, then he piggybacked on to uncertainty, talking about for us how sometimes we can get going so quickly, but we can't see very far in front of us that life can be very unpredictable at times. He says, the future is uncertain, but we need to move forward. We need to move toward it with confidence. There's future to be created, a humanity to be liberated. We need to stop wasting our time and stop being afraid of what we cannot see and do not know. We need to move forward full force because of what we do know. We do know that God is faithful. Because of that, you can move forward into the uncertainty of this life because God is with you and he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you for this day. Help us, Lord, even in the midst of uncertainty to go full, uh, full blast ahead, trusting in you. We love you and thank you in your name. Amen. Have a good day.